friends, greetings for the day. Welcome back to the tutorial on ISTQB. This is Nish Kumar Singh and you are watching ISTQB Foundation series. We are here in chapter 2, still in chapter 2 discussing the third topic. We have covered so far two topics in this particular chapter and we'll be looking at the third one here today. The topic for today's session in this tutorial is the test types and we'll be understanding a lot many other things inside this because we have several classification under testing and different legends to be covered as a part of it. So let's go with that. First of all, let's understand what exactly is the classification of testing, which would answer a lot of your queries and also help you to understand how the testing classification tree is created. So first of all, the software testing is classified into two categories. One is the static testing and of course the second is dynamic testing, where static testing is all about non-executable work products which are being tested for any kind of ambiguities, omissions, any kind of insufficient information, loopholes in the document, flaws in the document, and so on. Where the work product could be any such thing which is created inside the uh, process and adds value to minimize the defects. Whereas dynamic testing on the other side deals with executable part of the application where you try to execute the application and test it. So generally we prepare certain test cases which will be executed on the application by running the application. So the major difference between static and dynamic is generally that static is non-executable and dynamic is executable. Further, if you want to understand more about static testing, we have four types of reviews by which you can conduct static testing. We have informal, walkthrough, technical and inspection. And they have their own uniqueness, understanding about these of them. So we'll be talking about them in chapter 3 in more detail. So uh, stay tuned with the tutorial and the channel. On the other side, when you talk about dynamic testing, we conduct with the help of uh, levels of testing. And we have several levels like component testing, integration, system, and acceptance. We do have many other non-functional levels, but they are not in scope of foundation level. So we are not going to talk about non-functional testing in more detail. But of course, we are going to create a difference between what is functional and non-functional testing in the next topic. So generally, we call this approach of conducting static testing as reviews. And on the other side, dynamic testing is called as levels of testing. And we have several types of static testing that is reviews and different levels of testing as component integration system and acceptance. Just for your kind information, these are the four levels which are generally called as the functional levels of testing or functional testing of an application. Also, to a certain extent, we can also understand that static testing is something which is called as uh, verification and on the other side, we call it as validation. That can also be understood from the V model that, you know, the left side of the V model is called as verification where you only deal with the work products and dynamically executing the application is called as validation. Let's move to the next. We have got here the difference between the functional and the non-functional levels. So generally, when you talk about functional testing, it's about the core features of an application without which generally you say that application is not considered as complete. Like without which a user cannot work on the application. It's not complete in any manner. Or generally, we also say that it is to test. The functions are all about to test what the system does how or what exactly the features are, what exactly it is supposed to do to meet the requirements. So we call that as functional testing. And generally the functional levels are uh, unit integration system and acceptance, which are conducted as a part of functional level of testing. Other than these, whatever you know is called as non-functional. But let's differentiate between functional and non-functional and understand how non-functionals are different from the functional level of testing. When you talk about non-functional uh, level of testing, generally it is to understand that how the system works. So when you talk about functional, it is what the system does, and here it says how the system works. And so how is a question which will be answered with several non-functional characteristics, which we also know it as quality characteristics of the system. Now, generally, non-functional levels deal with enhancing the existing quality of an application in terms of compatibility, usability, maintainability, reliability, performance, portability. So all those ability terms, what you would have heard of, or any such thing other than the four functional levels are called as non-functional. So, so for a certain example, I can say recovery testing, localization, security testing, failover testing, all these are non-functional parameter which deal with one or the other quality attribute of an application. 
Now, it's not a mandatory step, but of course, it comes to a part of the requirement where you can say that these are some of the things which are commonly taken care. But why I'm saying that it is not mandatory because subject to the client says that we would like to have a specific non-functional level to be tested, we would conduct that for them. So generally, it is being specified by the client that what quality, quality characteristics they are looking at, and we would take care of the same thing as a part of non-functional levels. So generally, we have 100 plus non-functional levels available, but it's up to you or up to the client to decide on what non-functional levels would be required for this application to be accomplished before we can reach the end users or the market. On the other side, we are also talking about understanding white box and black box testing in more detail. Uh, generally, these are two different approaches to be conducted, uh, used or, you know, you know, practiced or exercised for dynamic testing. So generally, people have a lot of uh, misunderstanding that uh, unit testing is a type of unit testing or uh, white box testing or white box is a type of unit testing or something. No, not at all. When you talk about these things, these are two different approaches. All your levels of testing can be done with white box. All your level of testing can be done with black box. But it is just that if unit testing is done with help of white box, that means at the structure, at the code level, it will be better and have more efficient results compared to black box. And similar way when system testing is done with the black box testing approach, it is more beneficial as you can address the UI, you can address the risk involved, and also the user interface when it works with system testing. So it's just a good practice. Uh, the profile generally include that white box is done at the code level where a person knows what is backend, what is the knowledge of the code, executes the code. In case the person gets a defect, he only fixes it because he knows what exactly the code is all about. When it comes to black box, the user or the tester or the person who is testing the application doesn't know what the structure is, what the code is and generally performs at the front end, that is user interface, UI, and uh, the approach will be entering the value and then trying to test the desired output. This role is generally called as tester, whereas white box role is called as a developer, or you can say, if developer is testing the application, he would prefer to use white box testing, and if a tester is using the application to test it, he would prefer to use black box testing approach. Now, generally, uh, there are certain synonyms of these names uh, where you talk about white box. So you can also know it as structure box testing, glass box testing, open box testing, clear box testing, transparent box testing. If you see all these synonyms mean one thing, including the white, that uh, it all be visible inside what's there. Like clear box, transparent, open, glass. It means that you can see through what's inside. That means you have the access to the internal code. You know what the structure is all about and how does it function. But when you look at the black box on the other side, the synonym says skin, closed, opaque, which generally means that I cannot see through what's inside. So you work on the outer body of the component or the product and you do not have any kind of interaction with the internal structure or knowledge about it. So, of course, that's one of the things which we really differentiate between white box and black box with. And uh, just to add value to this, we do not have any other color in entire testing other than white and black. Let's move to the next one. And this is the last topic of this particular session that is change related testing, which generally means that we are talking about uh, adding some maintenance test cases or maintenance testing, which happens with uh, a regular process of testing. So no matter what testing are you conducting, if you get a defect, you report it to the development team, developers fix it and return it back to you. Now, all you have to do is rerun the same test case, which revealed the defect to you to make sure that now the defect has been resolved. So when you rerun the same set of test case which revealed the defect and rerun to make sure that it is resolved now, you call it as confirmation testing. And confirmation testing is, of course, to confirm if the defect has been resolved, which is also known as retesting. So we commonly know it as retesting, but the ISTQB prefers to call it as confirmation testing. So please remember the name for that. Regression testing is followed after retesting, which is to uh, make sure that the change which has been done to fix the defect does not impact the other part of the module, which could be another issue 
in terms of like the changes when they are made it can impact this existing part of the module which was working fine earlier so we look forward to check those details as well which were working fine earlier and now maybe because of change they would have got any kind of adverse effect so we just make sure that they are not impacted by any means it's also that uh, understood that regression testing is a good candidate for automation generally we automate something which do not have the primary objective to find defects you can automate that because human intervention is eliminated and for finding defects we prefer to have human intervention regression testing is also conducted when additionally to the defect resolving we also call it as like when the live operation system has got environment changes that moving from one platform to another we call it as migration or in case a new functionality has been included in a working live application so when there are updates or upgrades so these are the different cases when the regression is conducted and we do take care of them as well when it comes to it so anyways we'll be talking in more detail about migration updates and upgrades in the next tutorial and that's called as maintenance testing and also a lot more about what maintenance testing details are so that's all from here team hope you would have enjoyed the video and definitely learned something new today in case you have any query feel free to comment it below if you have not subscribed to the channel please do subscribe to the channel which will help you to get immediately notified with the new topics on the session as well as the new tutorials so till then uh, thanks for watching the video team and happy learning